Hey guys, Awkward Hybrid here. Sorry for not uploading a video on time. It, it was it, it was my little brother's baptism yesterday for, for the church that I attend, and I kind of got all holed up with that, so my apologies. So, if you have noticed by the title of this video, it, um, I was planning on actually doing a review about the two movies that I saw on Netflix, and, um, so, but I'm, I'm not sure if I actually want to review it, think about it critically, because these movies, just, Home and The Box Trolls, just get you right in the feels. <laughs> so instead, I'll think I'll just talk about it. Instead, no review, no grading, no four out of five stars, two out of five stars. I'll, I guess I'll point out a few things that I liked and didn't like, which I guess you could call a review, but who knows. So, here's my review of them, or talk, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, sorry for my face right now, and how I sound. My family got sick over Thanksgiving break, so, uh, yeah. So, first off, let's start with Box Trolls, a, uh, claymation movie, which came out, I think it was this year, maybe last year, I, I don't know, but it's basically, the, the plot of this movie is Who's the Savage? It takes place in a very fictional town, in, in the shape of a weird cone like city it's, it's they're both on netflix so if you have it you could go check it out but anyway i think it's called like cheeseborg because this whole town just has an obsession with cheese yeah i know it's it's british humor just if <laughs> so if you're british i'm sure you might find it hilarious but bear with me here but yeah a lot of cheese stuff in this movie and it's sort of like class system like not like low middle high class they don't say it it's represented by hats from what i got like the red hats are basically sort of the uh the exterminators for the box trolls and like the white hats are like ultimate highest power it doesn't say if you're like a king a mayor uh, and a cult leader, I it doesn't say. You just if you have a white hat, that means you'll do the highest, most noble thing, which is, which is, lounging around in. In a room, eating cheese, and discussing it. It's, it's called, the tasting room. <laughs> Yeah, as I was saying, the plot is basically who's the savage. The the there's all this like propaganda and stuff about oh the box trolls they're evil they sneak out at night and they steal your things and they'll eat your babies because one night said ten years ago there is no exact timeline but it's supposed but it it's supposed to take place in like like. Either ne like from the late nineteenth to earliest twentieth century, from what we get at, but ten years ago there was a kid, the the Trump shop, Trump shop, something baby, who was kidnapped by the box trolls, and that kid turns out to be our protagonist. His name is Eggs, because that's the box that he has just his eggs on it but yeah he was basically not born but raised with the box trolls believing that he was one and my first question is how did he learn English there isn't really any English learning in the it doesn't show him learning English or it's like they read something it's just he knows English no explanation for it Like, he'll say, like, a couple words at first, so it's, like, like, come on, or this way. But then, he meets up with this girl. I admit, I actually don't remember her name. 
But she's the daughter of, like, the mayor, king, whatever of the place, and he clearly starts t talking with her, and it's just like, yeah, where did he learn that? But yeah, the plot is actually, there's a red hat guy named Mr. Snatcher, and he basically looks like some, like, the creepiest, just greasy son of a gun you might ever meet, and he's really suspicious, and he has a deal with white hat leader guy that he is um that if he exterminates every box troll then he could become a white hat guy and eat cheese in the tasting room so he's trying to exterminate them all and it's like oh they're monsters there's curfews don't don't leave your children outside at night I don't know <laughs> but yeah, it's like a very high honor about about, about this uh thing. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. It's difficult to talk this movie with a straight I mean to talk about this movie with a straight face. But yeah, of course, since this whole class system revolves around hats and cheese, Mr. Snatcher decides that he and his henchmen are going to try and replicate this like in their own little building but it turns out that Mr. Snatcher has allergies and I'm not saying lactose intolerant like oh he gets all like indigestion and cramps like no he actually has allergies like he swells up and gets hives for cheese just any kind of cheese and he is in complete denial he's not like no I don't have allergies he doesn't even notice it like, he doesn't notice how his neck and face get all itchy and how he bloats up, like, and, like, his lip is just, ugh. It's a little terrifying to look at. Like, they're setting this up in, in the room, and, like, the three henchmen are, like, spinning around this table. And, like, they're trying to give him as little as possible to prolong this as long as they can before he starts apparently hallucinating, because that's are his allergies. He swells up. He itches, he hallucinates. I I know. So basically, you're just sitting there like, so if being in the tasting room is, eating the cheese is his ultimate goal, there's gonna be a bit of a problem here. But yeah, then, of course, there's all, there's this, like, thing that happens when uh, he ends up discovering the box troll's location. And this is when the movie goes into a massive rut. Because it's, I don't know, it just really slowed down the film for me. Because it wasn't exactly as fast-paced as Home was from time to time. But, it, again, it just slowed it down. Because you knew it was going to happen. Like, there's eggs and he's, like, pretty much a captive or something. And he's sitting there. And, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to go too into spoilers for it, but I won't. But it gets kind of cliche, and you're just sort of sitting there like, Oh, goodness gracious, this is so slow. And, yeah, there's also a random guy in, uh, in Snatch's little area place. Okay, uh, hear me out when I say this, though, um. About the guy, like, random guy, like, his hair's all wild, and he has, like, a beard, and it's all gray, like, it's, like, has graying hair. Yes, it has, like, graying hair, yes. Anyway, just keep track on that guy, okay? I'm not gonna say what his role is, just keep an eye on him. But, yeah, it has one of the strangest endings that I won't go into detail to, but you won't exactly, you know expect it you won't really look at it and think oh boy that's just your children's film children's film you're gonna be like what the heck was that yeah I'm, I'm, I was just like sitting there for like a good few minutes just like what happened and the, the the story doesn't exactly end right there it shows like yeah it's not really a spoiler to say that it's you know um that they all get along and live together in peace because you kind of expected that from the beginning, since it's your who is the savage, us or them sort of story. 
I only have five more minutes to talk about about the next movie, Home, and again, I can't talk about this logically. I will talk about it emotionally, and I am kind of biased towards this film. I've only seen it yesterday, and then I watched it again earlier today. It's a really good film. Okay, um, I don't remember exactly what the book was titled, but it definitely wasn't Home. It was like The True Meaning of Smack Day. Yeah, the book by Alex Rex, and... Yeah, I remember, in fifth grade, I had to read this book as, like, a class assignment, and then Alex Rex came to that elementary school, 2010, fifth grade year. And yeah, I really liked the book. And then, of course, I end up seeing a trailer for the movie Home, which has the boob and tip and Pig the Cat, a cat named Pig. And I didn't see it in theaters, I saw it yesterday. On Netflix and I love it okay adaptation wise he does a terrible job at it I'll go wait for the Dom for him to do that I'll go wait for yeah him to do a lost in adaptation episode of home versus the true meaning of smack day but here's the rundown plot of the of of home you got a girl named tip or gratuity Tucci as she's called and her mom was abducted by the Boove, an alien species who wanted to take over Earth. Not to kill humanity, they just need a safe haven from another alien species called the Gorg, which are chasing after them. So the Boove decide to hide out in Earth, and they relocate all of humanity to one area. In the book, it was Florida, but it was moved to New Mexico. In the movie, it's Australia. Anyway... In the movie's plot, I don't remember the book's plot, it was like five years ago. In the movie's plot, Tip, her cat, and then and one of the boob named O, in the in, well, he's voiced by Jim Parsons, Sheldon Cooper on the Big Bang Theory. He, well, cause, like, he's a fugitive because he ended up doing a mis- uh, he, ended, he made a mistake. And... I'm not going to go into detail on what, because we only got two and a half minutes left, so I'm going to try to run through this as best as I can. So basically, it's trying to, like, get Tip, O, and then that cat all the way to, like, a certain location. In the first half, they want to get a Paris to f actually try and figure out Tip's mom's location. And then, of course, when they figure out it's Australia, they all, they all like, end up going down there. And the thing is, Gratuity, or, or Tip, whatever you want to call her, she wasn't brought with them, because due to circumstance, she wasn't recon like she wasn't recognized as a human, and she ended up, you know, with staying at her own place for a while. Anyway, blah, 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 there's more stuff that happens, I got two minutes left, I love the film! Again, adaptation-wise, does a terrible job, but again, I, I love it, it's the animation, it's just... It can be so fast-paced, and you just relate with the characters, or at least I did. Like, there's this really big blowout that happens between O and Tip, and you and you clearly, uh, sorry, you clearly understand both sides of the argument in that situation. It's not just, like, good, good guy and evil, bad guy, and, oh, only good, good guy is the agreeable one. Like, no, you understand both sides of the argument in that situation. It's just... And I'm not ashamed to admit, I was tearing up when I first saw the movie. Not gonna say what. Spoiler alert. Again, it's just so... I, I, if, if, you, if you have the time, if you have like three hours, each movie's an hour and a half long, 90 minutes. If you decide you want to watch the film, you got three hours, watch it. Okay, if you maybe... Okay, if you can get a hold of the British humor and then the American humor... Okay, if if you're from neither of those countries, that's that's fine. If you can get a hold of the humor base that's sort of like runs half of the movies, that's fine. It's just I recommend both for different reasons. One of them's more slower and the other one's fast paced, but it's still they're both good in their both ways. I got twenty seconds left, so I should end this here. Please subscribe if you like the video and I shall see you next time. Hopefully on time. Take care.